Last week we uh, we looked at Acts two. We looked at Acts two one to thirteen. We looked at the day of Pentecost, uh, the day that the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples when they were in that upper room. When you read forward from uh, that that verse in those verses, verses fourteen to forty, we find that empowered by the Holy Spirit, Peter or Jesus' disciples goes into the marketplace. And he kind of preaches, in many ways, his first sermon. What is the focus of his message, you might ask? Well, it's simply Jesus. He talks about who Jesus is. He talks about the cross and the meaning of the cross. He talks about the fact that Jesus is the risen Lord. And we read that as people listen, they are cut to the heart. And they ask, what do we need to do? Peter's answer, he says to them, repent and be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. And 3,000 people are added to the church number that day. When you read forward a little bit again from that, verses 42 to 47 of Acts 2, we kind of see that the church is birthed and fellowship among the believers, these new believers begins. And if you ever get a chance to read it, it's a great picture of what the church should look like, even for us today. Those, that pocket of, not just, you know, that number of churches that have just found Christ and those others that are with Christ, and they come together and they start to be church together. And you see some of the things that they do, they dedicate themselves to one another, to prayer, to worship, they kind of look after one another, there's all kinds of stuff in those passages. And it just reminds us, this is what the church should look like. And then you read forward again, and we go into Acts chapter 3. When you go to Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 26, we again find Peter preaching. What does he preach about? Want to guess? He preaches about Jesus, of course. But in between all that, Acts 3, verses 1 to 10, we have this story that Chris read for us just then. The story of the healing of the lame beggar. And I think the first thing that's really important to note here is that the early church was about words and deeds. What I mean by that is there were words. Peter was preaching the gospel. He was telling people about Christ. But also they were empowered in deeds to show the gospel and perform miracles in Jesus' name. We read that Peter and John are going to the temple to pray, as is Jewish custom. Jewish custom is that they would pray three times a day, nine o'clock in the evening, uh, but this one's the mid-afternoon slot, about three o'clock in the afternoon at the time. They enter by the gate called Beautiful, where they meet a lame man who is begging. I suppose our equivalent to that would be as we go into Asda or somewhere like that, we would often see somebody, don't we, um, begging and, and trying to, to gain a little bit of money or something from those going in. So the first thing I really want to say about this whole encounter is, the first thing I'll focus on is the fact that there is a need. Somebody said this in a quote, the man was sat at the gate beautiful, yet he was broken. There was a physical need in this man. He was lame, we are told. There is a financial need in this man. That's why he's there begging. And there's probably also, though we don't, it's not acknowledged, but we can clearly understand this would be the case, there is a status in society need for this man as well. Because of his condition, because of the way he was, he would be classed as an outcast in many ways in that society. Not much has changed, if we're honest, to some extent. And we presume, though, that this man probably felt that his greatest need would probably be to have more money. He was there, wasn't he, begging. He needed, would have required looking for more money. You wouldn't if you think, if only I have more money, then I would be okay. I, I just wonder if you think, if, for him, it was that he, he kind of was hoping for that, well, I, that Whoopi Goldberg moment. In Ghost, who's in the film Ghost? When the Patrick Swayze character clears this account out and gives this huge check to Whoopi Goldberg, who's the kind of this dodgy 
kind of false right over there. What the comedian? Yeah, that was scandal. Anyway. And he gives her this massive check of a few million pounds or something, and she's like, I want it. And then he, you know, Patrick Swayze's character's like, right, give it away. And he has to drop she has to drop it in the, the kind of the nuns charity. You know, would you give some money to the nuns coming or whatever? And she's like, Do I have to? Do I have to? And you can imagine them opening the box and seeing his check going, Whoa! <laughs> You wonder if this man's thinking, oh, it's just one day someone's going to drop in this large amount of money for me and I'm going to be alright again. Perhaps many people you see today feel that if only I had more money. And don't get me wrong, money is very important. And you feel actually for some it's going to get even more important over this next difficult economic period that we're in at the moment. Money is going to be tough. That kind of the whole pressure that's bringing and money will help people, won't it? But perhaps this man, and I'm sure many people today feel that money is the answer to everything. But as we might see, it's perhaps not everything. And I think also we acknowledge at this point that there are many people, and maybe their need isn't money, but many people today, and perhaps most people today, and me, like probably many of you, we might have other needs that are in our lives at the moment. For some of us it will be financial, and the struggle and the pressure that that's causing us at the moment, but many of us will carry all kinds of needs in this room today. Some people might have needs of worry about things, <coughs> stress, maybe you've got concerns around your job, maybe you've got a relationship breakdown, Maybe you feel there's the kind of the, the burden of mental health at the moment, or loneliness, or illness. You know, we're not going to ask people to, to confess their need, but I bet if you went across this room today, then there'd be all kinds of needs that people are carrying. Because life can sometimes throw that towards us. And these needs are also very real and very important in people's lives, and we've got to acknowledge them <coughs> where they are. So there is this need in this story, but then we move on a little bit to my second kind of point, really. It's that Peter and John stop. And I like this. See, Peter and John didn't ignore the man in need. They didn't just quickly rush by and think, well, I'm too busy, nothing to see here. <laughs> they stopped, we're told. And you kind of hope that that's what a follower of Jesus might do, don't you? You hope that a follower of Jesus might notice where there is need. You hope that a follower of Jesus would have a, a care about when they see need. And you hope that a follower of Jesus might potentially, where they can, if they can, get involved in some way. That's kind of a follower of Jesus thing, isn't it? Isn't that the challenge of the parable of the Good Samaritan? You know the story about the guy who got robbed and mugged and left to kind of die, the Samaritan who was like the enemy of the Jew, and then the priest comes and he kind of, oh, I'll shuffle by, and then there's a Levite comes to be quickly snipped by, and then, you know, the Samaritan comes and sees the Jew, and you think, he's going to lay the boot in. But no, he stops, and he helps, and he cares for and there's that question, who is my neighbour? And it's like the challenge for us as the people of God, where we see need, where we see people, whatever that need might be, it could be financially, it could be all kinds of stuff, the idea that we stop, and actually we have a bit of attention there, and we, where we can, we offer help, because we're Christ's followers. And then, Peter and John say this, they say, look at us, now I must admit, I must have read this passage a number of times before, I've probably preached on it before. But this time I've kind of drawn to that verse, verse 4. Peter looked straight at the lame man, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. And I think to myself, I think most people wouldn't say that. Most people don't say, look at me. Mainly because most of us are a bit insecure. So we're like, no, look at me. We don't want the attention on me. Push it away somewhere else. I kind of feel by saying to the man, look at us, it's a kind of a dangerous line. Because I kind of think if I was to say, look at us, we're kind of saying, I wonder what people would see if we said to people, look at us. What would they see if they were in that position? 
But my thought here is that actually sometimes there is a need for us to put ourselves sometimes as followers of Jesus above the parapet. Sometimes we've got to say, here I am, I'm a Christian, look at us. Because I'm a follower of Jesus in this situation. And you kind of feel here in some ways, in the end, it's about having a confidence in Jesus in us. So when we're out in the world today, when there's things going on, whether it's uh, where we're confronted with need, or we're confronted with injustice, or we're confronted with just bad conversation, or whatever it might be, and conversations at work, or the character assassination going on, or whatever. And sometimes we might have to stand up and say, actually, guys, just look at me, because actually, uh, this isn't the way. We, we've got to have a confidence in Jesus in us, in some of these situations. And it's not easy, is it? But he kind of moves me on to what I love most about this passage, and this is the key, really, for me. In this passage, they offer the man Jesus. This is what I really like. I love this bit, and this is the bit that can be getting to me a little bit again this week. See, verse 6 says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Going back to the fact of to people in need, I hope that we know that it's important that when we see people in need, that we help people. Sometimes we practically help people where we can. Sometimes we might give generously to help somebody where we can. Sometimes our presence, just our presence, being with them, being involved in them, can be of real value to somebody who's in need. Sometimes a listening ear is really valuable. Showing some sort of care towards somebody in need. All those things are really important. These are very much part of our calling as expressions of the fact that we are followers of Jesus today. When we visit somebody who's in need or we drop them a line or we, we kind of make them a meal or we... Whatever we want to do, just we help people. That's part of our expression of being a Christian. But what I was challenged about again this week was most of all, we must offer people Jesus. Again, just a quote on this passage, somebody said this, actually the man didn't need more money, he needed more of Jesus. And I believe that is so true for so many people today. You know, Jesus is man and woman kind, greatest need. Yeah. You know, in Jesus, in this place, this man receives healing. He does receive healing, doesn't he? He's physically healed. And I believe Jesus still is in the business of healing people today. Yeah. He heals people physically today sometimes. He heals people emotionally. He heals people spiritually. Jesus still is in the business of healing. But I also think that this man, in Jesus, receives so much more. I think he received a new beginning. I think he received value and acceptance, maybe for the first time in his life. I believe he receives hope and a new purpose. There's obviously joy that he receives because he's out there praising God. And I believe that in the end, what he's received most of all is a new faith. Come on. A faith in Christ. <clears throat> you know, I often feel that I have very little to give to help solve need. And actually at times it can, feel, it can often feel very overwhelming and actually very frustrating. And actually when I see the needs, big needs across the world, needs more locally in, in our nation, but also just people that I encounter. And I think to myself, oh, I just I feel so limited, frustrated at times. But I have to remember, even though there's often not much I can do. There's often not much that I have that will really <coughs> solve or help in many probably big way. What I can offer, what I can do is offer people Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I can point people to Jesus. Right. <coughs> there was a time, we've said this before, when, when we were sort of talking about uh, Christian stuff, maybe doing a bit of Bible study with Emma, our daughter, 
And basically you ask her a question and basically every answer she'd just say, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was kind of a set thing, you know, it wasn't, you know, you'd, you'd ask her what time it is, Oh, Jesus. And <laughs> yeah. um, she'd answer Jesus to most questions, particularly when we were talking about those sort of things. <laughs> you can argue perhaps that it's not quite as straightforward as that. But I do believe, because over the years I've both seen and experienced it, that Jesus is someone who can set people free. Yeah. I believe that Jesus can set people free of issues, addiction, the shackles of life. I do believe that. I believe that Jesus can help make earthly burdens lighter to carry. I believe in Jesus people can discover welcome and acceptance and value. I believe that in Jesus people can find purpose and meaning in this life. I believe they can find strength to get through and to overcome stuff. Obstacles and barriers. I believe in Jesus and his hope and deep peace and real joy. I believe that there is great power in the love and kindness of Jesus. That's why I want to offer people Jesus. And you know, in this story, it's a great witness when they do. We're told that, isn't it? That kind of an next point, really. It says, in our story today, when people saw the lame man here walking around praising God, we are told that they are filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And again, another quote. Cool things happen when you just simply do what a Christ follower is supposed to do. And cool things happen when you place yourself in a place and position where God could be at work. I like that because it's a cool moment, isn't it? And this story tells us that when we offer people Jesus, we benefit. Do you not think when this guy got up and started to run around praising God, do you not think that Peter and John were buzzing? <laughs> and then the word, they're like, come on! <laughs> you know? Not because they were trying to pick themselves <laughs> up, but because they were like, we got, we got to join in what God was doing yeah. and see that. They were buzzing, they benefited. When we offer people Jesus, other people benefited. <laughs> the man received healing in the story and a new faith and a new purpose and acceptance and value and all this stuff. They benefited. When we offer people Jesus, God is lifted up and glorified. And we're told that others are drawn in. The crowd are drawn in because they see the difference that it makes. When somebody discovers and receives Jesus. It's a great witness. So as I was kind of finishing around this, I was thinking, thinking about as a church, what we can offer. As a local church, what can we offer? Well, we can offer a food bank. We do that every Tuesday. We've done it for about 10 years. Every Tuesday between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, we open up a food bank, we have food parcels, we have a chance to have a brew and a chat and get some great donuts or whatever they want. And it's practical help, isn't it, for people that might need it at the time. Indeed. We can offer that. Indeed. We offer the Welcome Cafe. It's fantastic. I love the Welcome Cafe. It's just a great space for people to connect and socially be together and just find that friendship. We had a great game of... Uh, of um, Kind of boom, boom, didn't we? And then Pete, Pete won, right? Pete. Yeah, he has a champion over there, he won the champion. Ernest won a match, Pete really? won a match, Anthony won a match, and then they had a playoff, and Pete took the crown. It was just, it's a social space, it's yeah. good to be together. As a church, we can offer community. Hopefully, we're friendly, hopefully, we're caring and supportive of one another. Hopefully, we can be a place where people feel safe and that they can belong to. We might even be able to offer a kind of goodish message every so often. We can offer some great worship music, can't we? Yeah. We can maybe even offer a visit from the church leader. Now, is that good or is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> we know that some of you have the other set when I'm all around. We can offer that stuff. And these things are good. These things are important as part of us being church. But most of all, we must aim to be somewhere that offers Jesus, yeah. that helps people to discover more of Jesus, helps people to know Jesus yeah. more deeply in their lives. There's a song that we maybe used probably a long time ago called Lord I Need You by Matt Mayer. 
It's like a great song. It talks about every day I need you. We sing it out to Jesus. See, we all need to accept who Jesus is. Every single person needs to know that Jesus is the Son of God. He's our Saviour, Lord and Friend. Yeah. We need to know our need of Him. We need to have that conviction in our heart that knows that actually we're a mess to a point. We're sinners, we messed up. And there's a conviction that we need a Saviour. We all need to know His forgiveness, His grace and His mercy and His love. We all need to put our faith in Him. Totally, not just as a part-time pick and mix thing, but 100% in for Jesus. Yeah. We need to encounter him constantly through his Holy Spirit. Not just even on the church on a Sunday, but wherever we are in our daily walk. We need his transformation and his restoration. <coughs> and we need to follow him. We need to follow him daily. We need to grow in our relationship with him. We need to learn more from his word and what it means to follow him. We need to pursue him more and the things of him in our lives. We all need Jesus. Lord, I need you every day. I need you. You know, and as I finish, we're told in this passage that this man had been lame from birth. Basically, the life that he had was all that the man knew. But on this day, which I'm sure for him, he thought it was just going to be like every other day. As he met with Jesus through Peter and John, it became a life-changing day. That's right. You know, there are many people, far too many people in this world, that what they have is what they know. For some, it's not bad. For others, I believe they know and they're longing for something <coughs> far more. Maybe they feel the answer might lie in having more money. But I pray that as a church we offer people Jesus. That they might discover not just a new day, but in fact a life changing moment. So that's where we are today. And I can say similar. To Peter and John, money, silver, and gold, I do not have. Though it's not quite true. Because look! <laughs> we have got money! <laughs> and you know what? If you were a bit skint today, if you are struggling financially, and you've got that burden over you, <clears throat> I am more than happy to give you this. Especially if it spills away. I'll try <laughs> <laughs> But I mean it. You are struggling today. Anybody? Anybody on this? I mean it. You, you know, I got more money than me, my son. Honestly, can we see it again? It doesn't matter if there's one of you or five of you or whatever. We can give you money. We have that. We're not quite in the same position. And I mean, we would give you money. I'll give you, I'll give you some money today. If you're struggling with a bill or you've just got something, I think, yeah, I've got that today. Would my church give me some money today? Yeah, we'll give you some money today. Probably Chris. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get facts. Not to cut. <coughs> and I mean it. Come and, come and sit down because I know it's a bit awkward to sort of publicly say I need something, but we're here to help. That's the church, you see. But more than anything else, today what I can say is I can offer you Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. I know Jesus is here. <laughs> And I know he wants to meet with people and he cares for people and he loves people and whatever you, wherever you are, if you however you've got an issue or a struggle or a concern or whatever, I offer you Jesus. Whether you're not well, I offer you Jesus. If you um, if you're not a Christian and you just want a new life and, and, and hope in Christ, I offer you Jesus today. I can do that, you see. Because it's free, it's abundant, and and the good thing is about it is I can just, you know, it's not I'm not for you something, I have, I just kind of can say the words and he's here and he can meet you in Christ. I offer you Jesus today, every single one of us. Not just for us, but I want us to then take that away because I want us to offer Jesus into the world in which we live in today. I want people to have life-changing moments. Amen. Like when we heard from Peter the other day and he said he just met with Jesus. Great, fantastic, down with that encourage us, bless us. And whether it's for the first time or for the you think to yourself, oh, you know, I remember, I think I had Jesus, but somewhere on the line I just feel, hope today, make it a new day. 
I offer you Jesus today. I can do that. So what we're going to do, and I kind of thought, we haven't done this for a while. And I'm going to, I thought to myself, I just want to pray with some people today. You know, we've done some praying around seats, and we, and uh, stuff like that. And we've kind of been a bit worried about COVID and all that sort of stuff. I thought, I just want to pray with some people today to let Jesus do whatever he wants to do. So we're going to have some worship. And uh, yeah, and we're going to just offer you a chance to come out and pr receive prayer from the front today. Oh, that's a bit awkward, isn't it? I'm going to come out. I'll see you in a minute, Stella. And I'm <coughs> going to I'll get you in a minute. You know, it's a bit awkward to come out, but just come out if you can. We'll pray. With you. <coughs> and if lots of people come out, I know some other people that are happy to come and pray. Just come out and just pray with people. And all we're saying is just more of me, more of you, Jesus, really. Yeah. And then he does the rest. Yeah. So we're just going to offer people Jesus. And one way we can offer people food Jesus is through prayer. Mm. So we're going to sing some songs. Fantastic. And we're just going to say, if you want to come out and get some prayer, <coughs> to, work, to receive something of Jesus, we'd love you to do that. Your grace is enough.
Grace and love.